try to understand what are predefined interrupts. The interrupts from type 0 to type 4. So this type, what I am saying is your type number. So int 0 to int 4 are called as predefined interrupts. So these are predefined interrupts. So as you would have guessed it, since it is predefined, so that means something has to be defined in the microprocessor itself. And they are meant for specific functions. So your predefined interrupts meant for specific functions. Please note that even though they are meant for specific functions, these functions have not been provided the subroutines. So the subroutines or ISR, the interrupt service routine, have not been provided. And hence the programmer is having the liberty to provide specific subroutine for the specific functions which are ranging from type 0 to type 4. Now what are these various functions? from type 0 to type 4 let us try to list first and then we'll try to understand uh, each one of them in brief the first one is type 0 or divide by 0 function the second one is type 1 or single step interrupt the third one is called as type 2 which is your non maskable interrupt so nmi so please understand the nmi is your hardware pin in 8086 whenever that interrupt enabled then type 2 interrupt is executed. So we'll understand more about that in detail. Now type 3 is breakpoint interrupt and type 4 is interrupt on overflow. So these are the five predefined interrupts. We'll go into each one by one. The first one is type 0 or divide by 0. Now this is part of a divide instruction. Divide instruction are of two types which you have seen. One is div and idif. When both of this instruction results into a mathematical expression such as 1 by 0 such that the result of the division operation is too large to fit in the destination register. So if the result is too large to fit in the destination register. Now destination re register is usually AL or AX then this interrupt that is type 0 interrupt is raised or it is executed. So we have already seen that all these software interrupts are non-maskable interrupts along with NMI. Okay, so that is this is a non-maskable interrupt. The fourth point related to this is the user needs to write an ISR for the desired action when divide by zero occurs. Now, what does this mean? As we have already discussed, that these predefined interrupts have only been defined by means of functions. So it is just said that type 0 corresponds to divide by 0, type 1 corresponds to single step interrupt and so on. But what happens when the divide by 0 function is executed that has not yet been defined. That is left on to the user. So user here does not mean the end user. That means you and me who is using the laptop. It will be the programmer. So the programmer who is writing the microprocessor program, he or she needs to write the program related to the type 0 interrupt. For example, if you see this windows calculator, now if I write here 1 divided by 0 and if I press equals to 1 divided by 0, now here it has been shown that cannot divide by 0. So this cannot divide by 0 has been printed on this screen. The program for this cannot divide by 0 has to be written by the user. So the programmer for this calculator has written that whenever 1 by 0 interrupt is executed, the calculator should display the text cannot divide by 0. So this is the program which we are talking about. So I can write the programmer needs to write the ISR or interrupt service subroutine ISS for the desired action for the divide by zero interrupt. So now let's move to the next interrupt that is type one. Going to the second type that is your type one which is called as single step interrupt. Now to understand this type one single step interrupt and your breakpoint interrupt let me first show you by means of a software that is called as Octave. So here we are having the editor window of Octave software. Octave is similar to your MATLAB. MATLAB requires a license and Octave is a freeware. So you can uh, use this, download this for free and you can try to use this on your own system. I am just executing a simple code. If you can see uh, here I have run a for loop from i equals to 1 to 10 and when I am just giving i equals to 1 to 10 it means that it is going in a steps of 1. 
I am loading the value xi equals to i plus 10. So I'm just incrementing whatever be the value of i with plus 10 and y is as it is, what is the value of i and I'm trying to plot uh, three graphs. The first is plot x comma y and I'm holding it so that it is paused and I'm plotting it on the, on the same graph. So that is plot 2x comma y and again I'm holding it and again I'm plotting 3x comma y. So it's just, just a simple code. So let us execute this and see what happens. So as you can see, there are three lines plotted here. Now y is varying, y equals to i, so y is from 0 to 10 and x is from 10 to 60 and there are three lines corresponds to plot x comma y, 2x comma y and 3x comma y. Now I want to debug the code and I want to see how the lines are getting plotted. So what we can do is, I can introduce breakpoints. See what happens is, when I have pressed this button, that is save file and run, the entire program got executed from this line till this line and in between like the for loop was executed 10 times but if I introduce breakpoints so suppose I introduce breakpoints at this point so now we are having a breakpoint at line number 6 and let's run this program and see what happens so the first thing what you would have seen here is we have got an arrow at line number 6 this shows that all the instructions or the program lines before this line number 6 has been executed and there have been no issues with this and that is why the pointer is coming to line number 6. So let me just resize this window to make you easily see this is your predefined interrupt so this is the window. Fine. Now currently the instruction which has to be executed is at line number 6. Right. So let me go to the next step which can be done by using this icon so which is points to the step. So if I go to the next step so the instruction hold on has been executed and the program again has been paused. So if I press again this icon it will move from 7 to 8 and as you can see a next graph or the next line has been plotted that means plot 2x comma y has been executed. So again if we press next the hold on has been executed now it is pointing to line number 9 so if i press this you'll be getting another graph now by this example what i want to highlight here is that instead of running the whole program if i would have got a bug in this program and i wanted to check whether my uh, bug is in the for loop or after the for loop whether it is in plot or in hold on i can introduce a breakpoint so what will a breakpoint do is that it will execute the program from the top till that breakpoint or just before the breakpoint and it will pause the program. So it is like interrupting the program so that the user can check where an issue has developed or where there is a bug. And after that we can go by single step execution. So in the single step execution what happens instead of the program getting executed, the program will only get executed one step at a time. The program will be interrupted and it will be made to pause. This will allow the user or the programmer to debug the code or even see how the program is performing or is the program performing as per the user's or the programmer's expectation. So both of these two methods that is breakpoint as well as the single step is used in debugging mode. Now you can see this that's why it is present in the debug menu. So breakpoint as well as step uh, if I quit this, so this arrow goes off and I can remove all the breakpoints from this one. So I can go here, remove all the breakpoints. Now, please understand this is just an example with respect to Octave program. Uh, you can have these features of breakpoint in your MATLAB also. It's another programming software. And with this example, I just want to show that this two features, that is single step as well as breakpoint, is also present in your 8086 microprocessor. So let's go back there and try to understand what happens there. So the single step interrupt or the type 1 interrupt is generated whenever the trap or the trace flag is set to 1. So if you recorrect trap flag represented by TF, it is sometimes also called as trace. So or trace flag. So when this flag is set to 1, then your type 1 interrupt or the single step interrupt is executed. Whenever this interrupt is executed, as you would have seen, your microprocessor goes in debugging mode. And in this mode, 
the user or the programmer needs to write an interrupt service routine or ISR to halt the processor temporarily and return the control to the user so that after execution of each instruction the processor status can be verified. So I can write after debugging mode an ISR is written by the user or programmer which temporarily stops the execution of program and this enables the user to check the processor status. So here the user means the programmer for the 8086 microprocessor. We check the status of processor. So when we are talking about the status of processor, it means what is the content of your destination register, whether there is expected values or not, or if there is some issue with the flags which is not getting set or reset as per the expectation of the program. Now we know that that there is no direct instruction to set or reset your track flag. So if you remember, we can set your direction flag by STD or we can clear your carry flag by CLC and so on. But for the track flag to set or reset, there is no direct instruction. So TF cannot be set or reset directly. So we have to do it indirectly. If you remember, we had discussed about few instructions which can be used in this case. So I am not going into the details because already I have given you a task for that and so many of you have submitted it. Uh, I just give you a hint here. You can use the instruction push flag and then pop flag. Along with that between push F flag and pop flag you have to change the values of the flag and you also have to use some push and pop instructions so that you can change the destination content of the register. So using these two instructions, you can indirectly set or reset the trace flag. Now let us move to the type 2 interrupt, which is called as the non-maskable interrupt. So this type 2 or the non-maskable interrupt, we have discussed it before also under the case of non-maskable interrupt classification as well as in the case of the hardware interrupt. So the summary of this, I'll just repeat it here. So whenever the NMI pins is high, then this interrupt is generated that is your NMI interrupt is generated and it is a non-maskable and hence it is, cannot be disabled. Now what is the significance of uh, NMI interrupt? NMI interrupt for example in your laptop it is that emergency button if you keep on pressing your power button for 5 or 6 seconds it goes for a shutdown or it's called as a hard reset. Now hard reset means that you see the your laptop has hung or your desktop has hung so what you will do is you will keep pressing it and your laptop goes for an emergency shutdown. Now this is an NMI. The request of the NMI cannot be ignored by the microprocessor and hence you can say that it is used for emergency purpose especially for controlling some specific operation. So we are done with type 2. Now let's move to type 3 which is your breakpoint interrupt. So the type 3 that is your breakpoint interrupt it is used to implement a breakpoint function. And the purpose of this breakpoint function is it helps in executing a program partly or up to a desired point. Breakpoint is defined by the user or the programmer and this implements or I can write executes a program partly or up to a desired point. Now, now once the program has been paused after execution for a certain instructions or certain number of lines, the control returns to the programmer. The control returns to the programmer. So or the, in this case the user. So the control returns to the program. Now what happens or what is the advantage once the control goes back to the programmer? Once the control is with the programmer, the programmer can check the various registers or the variables or even the flags whether they are up to the expectations or not. So if the flag, suppose parity flag should have zero, but it is showing one, that means there is some bug in the code. So he or she needs to verify where he has gone wrong. So this is done by implementing a breakpoint interrupt. Now, as you can see, this is a type three interrupt. So if you want to execute a software instruction, so what would be the code? The code will be INT3 because you know the general format, the, it is INTN and if for a type 3 interrupt you will have to just write INT3 or you can write INT03 both the things are same here 
and likewise for type 2 that is your nmi interrupt you could write int 0 to h now both this type 3 interrupt as well as type 1 interrupt as mentioned before they are used to debug a program by executing the program part by part in the case of breakpoint interrupt it is used for debugging the program we are done with type 3 interrupt now let us move to the last one that is your type 4 interrupt so the type 4 interrupt as the name suggests it results in something called as overflow so overflow in the number of bits as compared to your destination location just to be precise when a signed arithmetic operation generates a result whose size is larger than the size of the destination register or the memory then this overflow flag is set if I want to write it down, so it is a signed arithmetic operation whose result or the result of which is or it is larger than the destination register or memory location. Then this overflow flag is set. So this results in the setting of your overflow flag to be 1. I can just put one later then. So, if a signed arithmetic operation results in a or uh, it provides a result whose size is greater than the destination register or the memory location, then your overflow flag is set. Now, this is basically an error condition. So, this is basically an error condition. So, whenever an error condition is generated in a signed arithmetic operation, then it results in a overflow flag to be set. Please don't confuse with the setting of, of your carry flag. Now carry flag gets set when you are performing unsigned addition but here it is a case of a signed arithmetic operation. It has a specific instruction also. So you can generate this overflow interval by two means. This is very important part. One is by the normal method which you can use as int04 or int4 by the general terminology of intn and there is a specific instruction for this which is or I can write a special instruction which is called as INTO. Now please note this letter is O and not 0. This INTO stands for interrupt overflow and this is another instruction which we had left when we are discussing your instruction set. So we are covering it now. Now INTO is a special instruction for your overflow interrupt. Such type of special instructions are not there for the remaining four interrupts which we have discussed. So please note INTO is for your overflow interrupt. Overflow interrupt can also be executed using INT04H or INT04 instruction itself. So we are done going through your different types of predefined interrupts starting from type 0 to type 4. So even though when I am saying we are going to the fifth uh, category that is your type 4 so please don't uh, confuse the fifth category and the type 4 the fifth category because fifth in the serial number but it is basically type 4 because it starts from type 0 so type 0 is your divided by 0 interrupt type 1 is your single step interrupt type 2 is your nmi type 3 is your breakpoint and type 4 is your overflow interrupt now since we have gone through all those predefined interrupts Let's just have a look at the various priority orders for all these interrupts. This is the interrupt priority order for whatever interrupts which we have discussed till now. The highest priority is divided by zero error and INTN. So here I am writing a general format INTN. Now INTN means all the software interrupts. So all the software interrupts have the highest priority and INTO which is your overflow for that is your type 4 that is your overflow interrupt. So these all these three are having your highest priority. This is followed by NMI. It corresponds to the hardware interrupt which we have that is non-maskable interrupt. Then the third in the priority order is your INTR which is your general purpose interrupt and for your hardware peripheral devices and the least priority is given to the single step interrupt which is your type 1 interrupt. So this is your priority order. So we are done with your interrupt uh, priority as well as the various predefined interrupts. In the next video, we will be discussing the interrupt vector table. So interrupt vector table which we have already seen in the first video of your interrupts that it holds the addresses of the various ISRs that is your interrupt service routine. So we will understand how is the interrupt vector table organized and how is the various code segment and instruction pointer address calculated for various interrupts. So this will be the topic of our next video.